Hey! Hey! Oh. Welcome to another Ramble Radio, motherfucker! But it's yeah. video. Okay, you're not See? wrong. You're not video. wrong. Okay, how do I put it this way? You didn't win, but you didn't lose. Mm. Okay, it's also it's also radio. So you, it's a tie. You, it's a tie. It's mm. a, that's an art. That's what my little league. Soccer coach told us championship game when we tied. We came back to tie, by the way. I thought that was more of a, it, it. I thought it was a very inspirational. We came back to tie the championship game um, at the end. It was fucking. It wasn't like a shootout at the end, a kickoff, or. They didn't do any of that shit. Nah. Just, he just tied his champions. Just tied his champions. We all got work. trophies. We There's all no got co champion. No, we were co champions, and that's what this our coach said. This is why soccer's. This is why soccer's terrible. He goes, "We didn't win, but we didn't lose." That's what he no, told. No, you didn't us. do anything. You did. You accomplished nothing <laughs> no. in the two hours you were out there. Nothing. We was accomplished. tied the game. We come back. A comeback tie. Down two nothing to tie it two two. I see. That's fine. In re- what would you have done had it been a playoff? They already did the Gatorade on the other coach, <laughs> and then we scored the second okay, goal. But if you tie, you can tie the championship game. But what yes. if you tied in the playoffs? Did both teams advance? Like, how does question. this work out? Uh there weren't playoffs. It was a just a the top two, two teams played. Top two teams went at it at the end. There were no playoffs, and then they, t- just... they they had a they actually had a tie. In so the in that game. case, it was like college before the playoff. Every game was a playoff, like college oh, style. Man, and I think we were like five one and one going into it or something. We were a good fucking team, man. Yeah. We showed heart. We came back. See. Like, had Don Beebe done that to tie the game, okay, Buffalo fans can right. jizz all over him. But just but, to cut the lead to 43 points to instead 80. of 50. Well, we lost by 80, <laughs> gang. Thanks to Don. We were going to lose to my 86, but Don Beebe showed <laughs> <laughs> Don Beebe showed heart. Oh. If it weren't for Don Beebe's heart, we lost by 86. If you had 52 other Don Beebe's. You'd have, you'd have lost this game by 40 instead of 80. <laughs> oh, man. It's, Too talented for offense or defense. He just <laughs> you got to keep on specialty. Uh, uh, the great, the one and only Don Beebe. Yes. The Beebs. The, the Beebs? Beebs? Can what, we say the, the that? Origin, the original Beebs. The original Beebs was Don Beebe. Why didn't he start talking shit when Bieber got that? Well, uh, there was no... I don't know. I don't know. Right? Maybe he'd just given up at that point. <sighs> he gave up. He probably gave up. He was up. like, you know what? I... Yeah. That's what... Do you I, know how, how much? Hard... How... What? Go ahead. Oh, no, go, no, you, you, you. I was just wondering like, how awesome the 80s would have been had those players had social media. Ooh. The stuff oh, that my... would have come out... <laughs> Michael those... Irvin. <laughs> How quick is Michael Irvin gone? How quick? Michael Irvin maybe last <laughs> a week? I mean, does, he does Jimmy the Greek days? ever even get on television? <laughs> does, does he even make it that far if he, there's Twitter? He talked. He, <laughs> Jimmy the Greek is fired the night Earl Campbell gets drafted. <laughs> The night, the night. You're like, well, you want to know why this guy's so dominant? <laughs> you want to know why it takes eight white guys to bring this one black guy down? Like a- it's bre- it's the way they bred them. He's out instant. Done. He's never even on CBS kickoff show. He doesn't even make it that far. <laughs> Musburger's gone. Musburger's gone. You know he would have just rubbed one out to these Cowboys cheerleaders before. The, like, he tweets that before the game. <laughs> just getting ready to rub one out to these Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. That motherfucker's gone. There's no way. Who, man, I, I, I oh, think yeah. the biggest... Surprise. Dick is never a head coach. Dick is never. I think the biggest surprise is Summerall is the only one who comes. Out. The one, the drunk one, who you think would be Summerall is the only one well, who comes out on. He stage. just doesn't know how to work Twitter. Right. right. Just, yeah. But Dick is never a head coach. That's for sure. Buddy oh Ryan's god. never a head coach. Oh my god. Can I tell you a Buddy Ryan story that may or may not be true? Okay. Supposedly, he would uh, uh, promise. When he was a high school coach in Texas, Eddie, yeah. it's a high school. Children. Uh-huh. Children. Uh-huh. Kids. Teenagers. Kids. 
he would promise a steak dinner to whatever defensive player took out the other team's quarterback. Not sacked him. Took him made out sure that kid couldn't play again in the wow. game. He would promise a steak dinner. Now, here's this, that's the rumor. Here's another rumor that if this is true, I love it. My algebra teacher in high school used to coach high school football, and uh -huh. he grew up with Buddy Ryan. He said Buddy Ryan was about two years older than him, and they two or three, and they went to the same elementary school. And Buddy Ryan, uh, like, tripped him up one day on purpose, bullied him and stuff. Yeah. And my algebra teacher, his older sister, was Buddy Ryan's age, and he said she just went over there and fucked him up in front of everybody, <laughs> just beat the shit out of Buddy, out of like fifth grade Buddy Ryan in front of everyone. His sister just fu so it makes sense the complex. Yeah. Right. Like it kind of it kind of makes. Well, he sense. he always every at the end of every game he just ran off the field. He he never right. went to confront anybody. No, he just bailed. He yeah. just oh man. Did you guys – you had to have hated him as much as Cowboy oh, fans did. Oh, I hated Buddy Ryan. Ooh, man. Hey, I mean, I hated – Any I mean, Eagles. I, I've, always coach, hated, I've always hated the whole division. But, yeah, that, sure. that, that particular time, that, like, late – like, 87, 88, 89, 90, that was just – That was – there was no one in the NFC East I hated more than him. Because well, da Dallas sucked at the time. Dallas was awful. Washington had just – Washington and New York were okay. New York, yeah. E and the Eagles were pretty good. I mean, they were pretty good. They it had was, Randall Cunningham revolutionizing right. a lot, doing a lot of things nobody ever seen. Those with the last couple of years of the '80s, it was the Eagles and the Giants. Yeah, and it was like they were kind of battling out there, like '89, '90. Yep. Those those years when and, when Reggie White kind of became a star. Yeah, you know, and that's that, when I hated. Oh, uh, Buddy God. Ryan was probably the most hated. I hated playing the Eagles. No question. I hated no playing the Eagles. Question. Yeah, he would it, supposedly he would promise steak dinners to whoever would dick. take the guy out. But my algebra teacher's big sister fucked him up in school. <laughs> he loved telling that story too. What was her name? Him. I wonder if that's what the name he said on his deathbed. Right. That was that was his rosebud. And they're all just like Rex and Rob are standing around like, like huh? Cynthia. Huh? Who's Cynthia? Who's Cynthia. <laughs> Apparently, chick that <laughs> fucked him up. Fucked him up. Apparently, just whooped his ass. Uh, oh man! I would again if there is a Zapruder tape of that. You know, uh, just who wouldn't play that before every right? Eagles game back then? If, if kids had cell phones back then, that would have gone viral. Viral. Buddy Ryan never has an NFL career ever, and the world's a better place. Because what this. locker room pays attention to that guy? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Fucking nobody. Exactly nobody. That's, so uh, Eddie and I saw Eternals. If we did. In an Open empty Thursday theater. night. Empty night. Thursday. All the other showings were packed. We found the magical empty showing. We found the unicorn, the 1030 unicorn show. Where... Because I think every because I think the 11 o'clock was in a massive one. Yeah. And the 10 o'clock was in a massive one. Theater. So everybody went to those. And we went to the smaller theater, which is, which is darn near like a near quarter empty. four, maybe? Like, not yeah. even a quarter. It's maybe at 20% capacity. If that. And they were, we were on an island over there in those yeah. seats. There's nobody near us. It was, uh, and I'm going to apparently make a controversial statement now. What? I very much enjoyed the movie. I don't understand. I liked it. And the, and the, more, that, the more distance I put between seeing it and now, I want to see like it, it more. more. I know. I, I want to see like it again. It more. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I, I mean... The end credit scenes I thought were both excellent. I I love how they just like they introduced f f what four new characters in in that movie. Yeah, and the we end got credit four scene. new got four. the end credit scene a lot. Well, even the before end... because Eddie right. and I were too dumb to realize that Kid Harrington's character, uh, he, he was a, they were not making any bones about it. His he had the same name as the Black Knight. The crest is the that she gives him as a present. Well, like at the, when the movie ends, and this is spoilers. I guess if you guys haven't seen Eternals yet, oh yeah, for the next few we're minutes. gonna spoil the fuck out of spoil it. Spoil the fuck out. Of it. We're gonna leave this milk out for six days. Yes, oh baby. So oh baby, we're watching the we're watching the end of the movie, and he says, yeah. "My family history is complicated, right?" And then she gets taken away by the celestial. And you and I are like, is he a mutant? And you go, you go. I was waiting for Claus to come out. That guy's a right. mutant. And I start going, yeah, he's probably mutant. And then the credits are rolled, and I start thinking. I'm like, I'm like, well, he's got an English accent. What mutant had an English accent? We're thinking he's Captain Britain. <laughs> so, and then you go, no, Captain Britain would have been like buff, like Jack, Captain America looking. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then I start thinking. Then I start thinking. Okay, he had that ring that was a crest that she talked right. about. And then she. And then he had a problem with his uncle. 
She said on that FaceTime call, she says, you every make a clue your uncle. And then they even ask Thena when she pulls out a Excalibur, is that the ebony blade? Right. <laughs> and but she's like, like, no, this is Excalibur. But to our credit, before we got to that end credit scene, we yeah. had named it the Black Knight. We, we were figured like, out. It, we're like, that's even the Black though. Knight. Even though, like, if apparently there were articles written months ago, like, Kit Harrington's going to be the Black Knight in the MCU. And we're like, oh, we just didn't even bother. Well, we don't pay attention to that stuff. We don't pay we attention to that stuff. We like to we see went it in blind, happen. baby. Right. And I just forgot that his name was, you know, whatever. Dane, Dane? Harrington or something like that. Double I forgot again. that was, you know. But, but oh, baby. Oh. oh, so we get Pip the Troll, major player in the Infinity Gauntlet comic. Yeah. Major player. We get him. We get Star Fox. Thanos' brother, we get the Black Knight, and then the big kahuna, we get Blade yeah. at the very, even though it's just, a, okay, um, okay, the voice was fine, yeah. but my one problem with the movie yeah. was that, and I loved it, but I still have a problem with that scene, because would it not have been better if you hear the voice say, are you sure you're ready to do that, Mr. Harrington, or whatever? And then the camera pans over, and there's Mahershala Ali with the leather trench coat, the shades, and a sword. How, what yeah. kind of pop does that get? Maybe, I, I, I'm just thinking they want to save it for Blade. I'm guessing. I guess. But I think we should have at least seen him pick up the sword and then transform into the Black into Knight. Into the Black Knight, yeah. And then, and then you it, hear the voice go, you sure you ooh. want to do that? But, ha but imagine the pop if it pans over and there's Blade. Oh, huge. Like, imagine the pop. That would have been insane. I know. And then, um, yeah, and, and of course now my the only thing I don't like is it looks like they're going to go with the comic thing where, like, the king of all symbiotes had something to do with the ebony blade because it kind of looks like it go like that goop it turned liquidy, the goop yeah, on the blade. I mean, if, if they're going through the trouble, like at the end of Venom 2, where they've brought Venom into this universe. Yeah. Kevin Feige has got to try to meld it into the story and not yeah, just be this, yeah. oh, now we have Venom here. Let's do something stupid. Like, right, if anybody right. can make Venom work in this MCU after having him established so horribly in those first two movies, Kevin Feige can do it. We hope. Knock on wood. And Knock to tie him into the wood. blade like that, that could be kind of cool. And, you know, to all the people, I don't understand what there was to dislike about this film. Like, I, I, I really enjoy... I mean, I can see pacing and stuff like that, but that's my, kind of her style. My only complaint is, like, this movie was two hours and 40 minutes. It could have been two hours and 20 minutes. Absolutely. That's yes. it. That's it. That's it. That's still, like... There was a lot of, like, long, sweeping shots of them just right. staring at stuff happening. They, you could have cut some of that You could have cut some of that out, maybe one or two less flashbacks. But yeah. the flashbacks were kind of important anyway. But, like, here's what I... What I thought was really impressive was how Chloe Zhao is known for making movies like Nomadland, the yeah. one with Francis McDormand. But it, you would have thought she was a Russo brother with the way she shot the Mercari Icarus fight at the yeah. end. That was like, gee, she knew her comic book money shots. Like yeah. she was, man, she, no, she knew what she was doing. It. She, the, the fight scenes I thought were fucking tremendous. And could that be adamantium when Cersei turns that, that wooden hut into steel? To protect those villagers Maybe. from the deviants. Maybe. Could that have been Adamance, the Mance? Maybe. 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 I, mean, I like, I, because I had no expectations going into this film. None at all. Right. I just did. I was right. like, okay, I don't know. This is going to be different than any other Marvel movie right. that we've experienced. And it was. But I loved every minute of it because it was different. It was different. And, it was, the, and I thought the acting was fucking fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Let's go back to how dense we were with the Black Knight. I think at one point during the credits, before we pieced it together, yeah. we were like, is Nightcrawler British? <laughs> we were like, well, yeah, at one point I said, is Nightcrawler British? Because he was right. in Excalibur. He was in right. the group Excalibur. Right. Yeah. Like maybe out this guy of the will, realm. Maybe he'll turn blue later. But we were like, is this guy? It was just so, like I was waiting for his eyes to glow red when he looks all angry. You know, but everything. we pieced it together before the end credits scene. We knew we, it was We coming. got it together. Yes, we got it. In the, in the three minutes of credits, we figured it out. We figured it out. We figured it out, baby. We knew. We And look, that movie gets a nod just for throwing Pink Floyd in the opening Marvel little yeah. logo thing. And then we get what you called was the Foreigner song when Star Fox comes out. Feels like the feels like the first time. Like you said, that sounds a lot like something. That's Peter Quill's stuff. mom. 
Yeah. Right. That's something Peter Quill's mom would have put on a mixtape. So there's the Are they right. all going to be in Guardians 3? The, those are term. Maybe not Cersei, uh, Kingo. But Thena. I think Thena. Thena, Mer- who is Thena, Macari, and Druig were the ones on the ship. Yeah. Maybe that's Star I think Star you see Fox. them. And they just started shooting Guardians 3 yeah. yesterday, I think. And it feels like the very first Because that time. whole entrance, and it looks like he was coming through on the Bifrost, too. Right, so him and does, Pip. Does he show up in Thor Love and Thunder? Ooh. Well, Thor's with him. If right. Guardians 3 is going to kick off after Endgame, well, Thor's I know, a member, right? Well, Thor is, the Guardians are with Thor in Thor and Love and Thunder. Oh, they are? Because they've shown have they said the that? set. Yeah, like. Pratt oh, and uh, oh. those guys have been on set with Thor, so Look you're going to see that. But Guardians doesn't come out for another year or so. So it's going to be what's first, Thor or Guardians? What's Thor. coming out first? Thor. Thor's first. So I think oh, we may my. see them then. What are they keep you in that way? I'm excited. I'm damned excited. So let's give a quick. Uh, Cody is uh, he's got fa- now he's got family visiting him. Mm. He went out to visit mm-hmm, family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now he's got family visiting him. This, I don't know, this might be, we might not have a week of rambles after this because I go in, knock on wood, my surgery will be Friday. This okay. upcoming Friday, the 12th, to hopefully get me tumor and cancer free. So that's going to be Friday. So I doubt I'll rock and roll that next week. Now, like, after. I could come over right now. We get done tonight. I don't see. Andre is going to stop it. I know. I told her I trust Eddie. I trust I, him. I, I trust him. Just I give have me a spoon a, and a fork. I can get just, it out. Just give me a rag to chew on, to bite down on, to clamp on. You get in there. You just bite on my foot, my big toe. You chew you on my big it. toe. You're fine. And then I'll be on the other end getting the. Hey, was I Colton's good luck charm or no? You might have been. Can we, can we talk about like how Colton... Uh, we went and saw, Andre and I went and saw uh, a Colton, one of Colton's flag football games. Yeah. By the way, which I'm just going to say this: Eddie is one of the coaches, and look, no one's no one's watching who will get you in trouble. Uh, one of the kids did a breakaway, and he pulled a full on Mike Tomlin and just jumped in front of the kid's way and knocked him over before he could get to the end zone. I'm just saying look, it. I Eddie did what look, he had to do. My <laughs> philosophy is. Just because you're not on the field doesn't right. mean you're not part of the game and part of the team. <laughs> there, it, there it is. See? There it is. So if you're on the sidelines, to me, you're an active participant in that game. I'm part of the team. I'm part of the game. So he comes near me. I'm making a play. <laughs> well, it was So Colton catches the ball at like the 10-yard line yeah, and Colton gone. Catches it. Yeah, he catches a little, like, he does, like, this little out pattern, does, like, a little five-yard right. out. That was it. just to get a few more yards to get a first down yeah. was the thought behind that, right? Yeah. That play. He turns and it upfield. Gone. High he made, doing he this made thing. Three, yeah, he made three people miss. He made three dudes miss. It was yeah. amazing. He was I would have to say, he's been playing flag football. Now, this is his fourth year. Okay. That was the greatest play he's ever had. No kidding. That was Not amazing. even close. That was, he, he was like, he's usually your clutch, like, He's usually like that blocking tight end that'll do yep. five yards, turn around, catch the Roll ball. Roll out he'll, and get you a first he'll down. Give you, he'll give you that clutch like fourth and three. Move those chains. He'll move the chains for you. Right. He's not right. a breakaway down the field. This Boy, time, it, it was like that Woody Dantzler kickoff return for the Cowboys. He was like yeah. hopping on one leg for four yards and then just – it was fucking insane. Yeah. He was he was Devin Hester out there, he man. Was, uh, he broke it free, man. That was that was awesome. It was that crazy. was really fun. That was – look at that. Um I got some bad news. Oh, man. We're having fun. Eternals, big thumbs up from the two of big us. Big thumbs up. Big ramble um, thumbs up. Big ramble thumbs up. I, now, I, shit. What? Well, oh. you know. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Skeletor. Uh, last week uh, was Halloween. Um, uh, we didn't have any shows last week. Um, yeah. So I didn't really get to see if you – did you – have a lot of visitors to Castle uh, to Snake Mountain uh, to giving out treats. Well, Eddie, that's a wonderful question, and I'm glad you asked me. Yes, Halloween a big time at Snake Mountain. Uh, one of my, my favorite traditions, if you will, is uh, any trick-or-treaters. Well, here's what I do. I, I don't have the traditional trick-or-treaters. I have orphans who come and trick-or-treat. They have to be 12 or under, and then I pair them up. And they fight to the death. And whoever emerges gets a new family. Isn't that great? 
They're the ones who get a family, and I put them in a wonderful house inside He-Man's mother's pussy. <laughs> it's big enough to fit. You get my point there? It's big enough for an entire family to fit inside in a house. All of that. Oh, boy. Um, I just Jeez. can't get over the fact you have orphans fight to the fight death. Fight to the death. That's that's the big sticking point. With me. My God. Yeah, you know, some want it, some don't. You know what I mean? You can see some in their eyes, they want that brass ring. And then others, uh, you know, they give up. And it's, I guess it's sad, but no big loss for us. There what do you, what do you, what do you, uh, this is a morbid Jeez. question. What do you do with the corpses of the orphans that don't make it? Well, uh, they also find a home uh, to rot away in He-Man's mother's pussy. You see, it's big enough for all the dead ones, too. Huh? Uh-huh. Okay. So alive or dead, they're going to the same place. They're going to the same place. I don't understand how that's a, <laughs> a vic- Okay. I, I think I'd rather be dead. Yeah, I think. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, you know, go find Cody, the Cinesnob podcast. Go check yeah. him out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasting. Eddie, where can they find you? Uh, five days a week, patreon.com, the Ralph Ooh. Report. Um, and then uh, Tuesdays, Fridays, we got Ramble Radio. Wednesdays, we That's got right, Ramble we do. Proper. That's right, we do. Yeah. Really and good. then sometimes Good Willow Hunting. Sometimes. Someday sometimes. soon. Someday soon, we'll do Back to the Future 2 and 3. But uh, yes, yeah, so to, you know where to find me. All this, all the same ramble places. I'll eventually start doing some YouTube videos again. Maybe Twitch again soonish. Got to see how the surgery goes, how the recovery goes, and all that bullshit. Again, most likely we will not be rambling next week, but we're gonna do all we can to get the rambles done for you this week. We will do our best. So there we go. We love you guys. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.